This video is an overview of a theory about the ancient Chinese trigram symbols and their prenatal and postnatal arrangements. Their origin is obscure and dates back to the earliest days of Chinese civilization. Throughout their long history these symbols have been used variously throughout Chinese culture. They have been associated with systems of diagnosis and treatment within Chinese medicine. They are used to represent various fighting techniques within martial arts. In Feng Shui they are used to determine auspicious spatial orientations. They comprise the basic elements of the hexagrams of Yijing, which is often used as a divination device, and they are frequently referred to in philosophical texts. Much has been written about these symbols, but a complete explanation of their exact meaning is elusive. A complete theory must not only explain why each combination of broken yin and solid yang lines are associated with the concepts creative heaven, receptive earth, clinging fire, abysmal water, arising thunder, gentle wind, joyous lake, and stillness mountain, but must also explain the structure and significance of the prenatal and postnatal arrangements. This initial presentation assumes some basic familiarity with the trigram symbols, the concepts traditionally associated with them, and their placement in the prenatal and postnatal arrangements. If you are new to the subject, a PDF file of necessary background information is linked in the video description. This theory is based upon the proposal that each trigram represents an elemental state of mind, with each of the three lines corresponding to one of the three realms of time, past, present or future. The trigram's structure and poetic tradition can be interpreted in a coherent and consistent manner when viewed through the lens of this model. The solid yang line indicates the attentive focus of the mind whereas the broken yin line indicates inattention. Inattention tends to produce chaos. Attention is an attempt to put things into order. This attempt may fail if the attention is misapplied. But here we are only talking about the mind's focus, not the resulting outcome. In its quest to create order the mind can focus its attention on any combination of past, present or future. It can also suspend its involvement with time, which is a technique common to many meditation practices. Present exists between past and future, consequently the middle line signifies the present. The present consists of what's currently happening, a never-ending flow of being we call now and which we experience as perception. The water trigram suggests a mind focused solely on the present, with no attention paid to past or future. Why is this state of mind associated with the terms water, darkness and abysmal? Consider what it's like to experience present sensations without any context from prior events, or any sense of where things are heading. In this state of mind you're completely absorbed in the current phenomena, a flood of sensation without orientation. Is this not like the endlessly transmogrifying flow of water, with no memory or ability to speculate it's impossible to make sense of anything? It's like falling into an abyss, a dark bottomless pit. Once an event occurs it immediately gets part in the past. When we speak of the past we are referring to two things. One is the immutable stack of all actual prior events. The other consists of whatever we think those events to be. Ideas about the past may not resemble what actually occurred, but the mountain trigram applies to actual events as well as the memory of them just as the word past signifies both as well. The mountain trigram has a single firm line on top, why is this symbol associated with stillness? When we attempt to put the past in order we create a fixed notion of what happened. If we cannot create a stable mental image in memory the past is thrown into question. Ideas of the past may change, but actual past events cannot, stillness is therefore an appropriate term to describe the past. Our idea of the past seems like an immovable foundation, until we learn something new that changes our mind. Actual past events set the stage for whatever is going on now as well as for whatever is yet to come. A mountain is a looming mass that defines the landscape around it. Just as our histories tend to define our preconceptions and beliefs, mountain is a set of preconditions we take as a given, and which form an edifice we no longer question. Turn the mountain trigram upside down and it becomes thunder, with one firm line on the bottom, its associated concepts are arousing, sometimes translated as shake, shock or quake evoking the potential for ground-breaking changes. 
The future is the realm of all potential change. We may have ideas of what the future will bring, but what actually is going to happen is anyone's guess. Attempting to create order in the future is a tricky business. Our worldview is likely to shake and quake if we place too much attention on our ideas of the future. Hearing thunder in the distance arouses our concern and we become more alert and vigilant. A loud crack of thunder causes all thoughts of past and present to be immediately overshadowed by suspense as we wonder what's coming. We experience shock and may even quake in fear if we feel unprepared for what we think the future will be. The joyous lake ignores the past in its attempt to unify present and future. This trigram is sometimes translated as valley or marsh. All these terms indicate a place where water pools and life congregates. Lakes, fertile valleys and marshlands are habitats for dynamic and diverse life because of the presence of water, but not the flowing water represented by the water trigram. Here we are talking about a large body of water. Joy results from the satisfaction of life's needs with the belief that this good fortune will continue into the future. Is there anyone who does not want joy to last for as long as possible? When we're enjoying ourselves we don't want to be reminded of unpleasant things from the past. This is what is represented by the broken top line. Forget the past and enjoy life now. The late trigram is a party-going state of mind. The lessons of the past can bring any party to an abrupt end so they are ignored for as long as the supply of happiness lasts. The wind is called gentle and penetrating because its present action is patterned on prior events. This state of mind joins past with present and is not concerned with the future. It attempts to maintain existing conditions by following the established order. New things are avoided. When previously existing operations are repeated they penetrate more deeply. It's only through long repeated exposure to the wind that its effect is noticed. This is not a hurricane, it's a breeze. It's gentle because it has no intention to change anything, but nevertheless over time an incremental effect tends to cause significant modifications to the landscape. The state of mind doesn't focus on the future, but its action influences the future anyway. All states of mind have some influence on present and future events. Heaven is called creative and represents the birth of new phenomena with past, present and future united as one. When something new comes into being it has to be built upon the foundation of the past, it must also be able to persist into the future and it must also be more than a dream, it has to actually exist in the present. If any of these conditions are absent then nothing new can come into being. Creativity is often experienced as a flash of insight or inspiration where all of a sudden everything comes together into perfect order, with something new arising out of it. Many of us have experienced some such creative moments in our lives, sometimes at work, in social interactions or through artistic endeavors. This creative state of mind can sometimes result in the whole world changing as a new thought brings about new forms, whether they be from inventors, geniuses or sages. This is also the state of mind associated with the creator of the cosmos who sees all of time as one unified object. The receptive earth indicates a mind state of absolute detachment, with no focus of attention in time whatsoever, free from all mental activity. When the mind is completely empty it becomes fully receptive. Many Taoist texts explicitly refer to this trigram as the foundation for meditation practices. Emptying the mind acknowledges the absolute truth that the cosmos is beyond human understanding and that we are humble creatures within it. This state of mind is a submissive and responsive elemental substance within which spirit resides, and from which creation emanates. Considering the functionality of the represented states of mind, creative and receptive, it's evident that earth is the perfect complement to heaven, because when we are completely receptive this allows new things to come into being. And when new things come into being the whole of creation cannot help but be receptive to that fact. In future videos it will be discussed how all the trigrams are perfectly paired with their opposites. Fire has solid top and bottom lines indicating a mind attempting to create order from past memories and future possibilities. Fire is associated concepts of clinging and brightness. 
when we want to illuminate the situation we withdraw from present activities to contemplate future possibilities in light of past events. In our effort to envision things we become absorbed in abstractions, clinging to them in the hopes they might lead to the future we want, or to help us avoid a future we don't want. We speak of a burning desire, fire being traditionally associated with desire in practically all cultures. Our thoughts tend to cluster around our personal concerns, ambitions, desires, wants as well as fears. This is why the fire trigram takes the dominant position in the postnatal arrangement. The fire trigram is the mind state for all abstract aspirations, both positive and negative. It can be a yearning for or worry about how past events might signify what's coming in the future. The broken middle line indicates that the present is being ignored or sacrificed. Everyone knows that nothing of significance can be achieved without sacrifice, and it's no coincidence that offerings are made to sacrificial fires. It's also the case that our fears are more likely to transpire when we turn a blind eye to what's presently happening around us. This example illustrates that the states of mind represented by the trigrams are not inherently positive or negative. They simply indicate the mind's configuration in time. We may think of our hopes and fears as being quite different from each other, but from the point of view of this model they are essentially the same state of mind, it is only our personal feelings that make it seem as if they were different. Each mind state can be experienced differently depending on its arrangement in relation to the other mind states. This is what is represented by the Bagua arrangements. The prenatal arrangement describes spiritually aligned patterns of thought where all mind states are balanced out by their opposites. Notice that each trigram is positioned opposite to its mirror image, where solid lines become broken and vice versa. The postnatal arrangement is not balanced. It describes materially bound thought patterns based upon the ego's drama of likes and dislikes. Both arrangements are set to the points of a compass with south at the top and east on the left as was the custom in ancient China. This implies a cycle pattern on the movement of the sun. The east rises towards the apex in the south at high noon, then setting in the west towards midnight in the north. The daily rising and setting of the sun and consequent distinction between day and night provide the ideal metaphor for cyclical thought patterns. Every thought pattern rises towards its goal and returns back to some root state. The southern trigram identifies the mind's goal towards which it ever reaches and is therefore the overall orientation of each arrangement. The goal of the prenatal arrangement is heaven signifying that the divine cosmic order is taken as the highest principle. In the postnatal the goal is fire, signifying that ambition and desire are held in highest esteem. Thus it is inferred that the prenatal represents a spiritually oriented mind while the postnatal represents a materially oriented mind. The trigram in the north identifies the root state of mind, which is the basis for the thought patterns. In the postnatal the root is water, which suggests that materialism is rooted in sense experience. In the prenatal the root is earth, which suggests that spiritual being is rooted in receptive nothingness. The prenatal and postnatal also differ in how mental focus is applied, as represented by the firm yang lines. When in materially oriented postnatal thought patterns we use the focus of our attention towards our own self-oriented goals. In spiritually aligned prenatal thought patterns we use the focus of attention to restrain the mind from engaging in thought activities. The trigrams of the prenatal are oriented in the opposite direction to that of the postnatal. For an example, consider the southeast position. On first glance it appears to be the same trigram in both prenatal and postnatal arrangements, but actually they are heading in the opposite direction to each other. For the trigrams in the prenatal arrangement the bottom future line is on the inside of the circle, but for the postnatal it is on the outside. In this case the prenatal trigram is lake while the same position in the postnatal is wind. Those with some familiarity of the subject may observe that some versions of the postnatal have their bottom lines on the inside just like the prenatal. But the fact of this version suggests there may be some significance to the change of direction. It could be said that one arrangement is heading outwards whereas the other is heading inwards. The concept of inversion being a key theme in Taoism, if we think of things as moving towards the future, 
the prenatal is moving inwards towards one point whereas the postnatal is dispersing away from a single point. Materialists believe that the future is to be found out there in the physical world somewhere. Spiritualists believe that the future is to be found within the center of being. The Bagua system suggests two primary mental patterns in relation to time. Experts will note that some variations can be found but these two arrangements are the most common versions. The word prenatal implies something that has not yet been born whereas postnatal refers to something that's already been born. The postnatal pattern cultivates thought objects in an effort to influence the physical world. The prenatal pattern balances and neutralizes thought objects to achieve a spiritual awareness that transcends time. This theory cannot be proven. It's impossible to know what the ancients had in mind when they created and arranged these symbols. There are numerous traditional methods of interpretation, in Feng Shui, martial arts, Yi Ching as well as various philosophical schools of thought. We can only discern for ourselves what makes sense. Time erodes the original meaning of things. Scholars can only reference prior commentators. The few ancient writings on this subject are typically cryptic. There is not to my knowledge any other theory that explains the meaning of the lines and how they relate to the traditional terms. This proposal may have its flaws but I believe it is at least a good start. Future videos will explore the detail operations of the Bagua arrangements and discuss its many implications and resonances. There will also be some discussion regarding Yi Ching. I hope you have found this presentation meaningful and useful. If you would like to support this work please visit its Patreon page, or you may send one-time donations via PayPal or crypto to the addresses linked below. Thank you for watching and for your generous support.